Hey everybody, so uh, Casey Knight here at iSolid 3D Printing, and right now I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a late night waiting on uh, the HP 580 to do its final systems checks. And since everybody was already gone and it was a little bit quieter around here, I thought it would be a good opportunity to go ahead and answer some questions about our latest machine, the HP 5420W that we just announced about a week or so ago. So first of all, we're excited to have this machine. I believe it is one of the first commercial deployments inside the United States. Uh, uh, shout out to DI Labs, which I believe is the beta tester for this particular machine in the North America's region. And those are some really good folks up there at DI Labs. So thanks for being the beta testers and, and uh, definitely want to give them props for that. And so in order to answer the questions, which is that we've gotten over the last week, we've pretty much what does it do and why? I got to lay the foundation as to why this is a pretty cool technological advancement by first talking about the original multi-jet fusion technology and the benefits that it had. So I would take even one more step further back and talk about SLS or selective laser sintering. That is the, uh, uh, the technology has been around for a while. It's an industrial technology that uh, similarly to multi-jet fusion uses a very fine Ni typically nylon powder. There's other polymers that you can use as well, but we'll just focus on nylon for currently. Probably a PA-12 powder, one of the most commonly used. So it's a very fine powder. Selective laser sintering uses a laser to um, fuse a very thin layer, anywhere between 1500, maybe 150 micron thick layer of powder, and it will use the laser energy to essentially melt that powder and paint a cross-sectional area um, by just moving that laser using either galvo mirrors or all sorts of fancy technologies to precisely control that laser and to fuse that powder layer by layer. Multi-jet fusion is very similar in that it also uses a very fine nylon powder. It also uses a very similar layer height of powder that gets laid. The difference being, instead of using a laser, it uses a very high intensity lamp as a energy source in combination with a agent commonly called a fusing agent during the process so the fusing agent i'm going to i'm going to simplify this and just call it a very dark ink and the powder itself is white so as the machine lays down powder and i'll actually flip over and show you the process in just a second but as it lays down the powder it it crosses in the entire print area with a a series of print heads and lays the agent simultaneously it hits it with the UV lamp. Because the agent is dark, the surrounding powder is light in color, the part itself will absorb more energy in that localized area and fuse the powder into a solid. The surrounding powder, which is still light, does not get enough energy to fuse and it stays in its current state. So that allows you, in comparison to SLS, to print a lot of cross-sectional area in a very quick time. So comparing the two technologies, the SLS to multi-jet fusion, main benefits are production speeds and throughput and ultimately how that equates to a reduced operating cost and a lower cost to our customers. So I'm going to quickly sound and kind of show you what that looks like in process. There's your fusing agent and your lamps that will fuse the part instantaneously. This is actually the 4200, so this is actually a two-pass system. The 5200, the newer machine, is actually a one-pass system, so it's even faster than what we're seeing here. Okay, so here is the 5420W. What makes this interesting is the fact that it's accomplishing the same fusing process, but rather than using a very dark fusing agent, it is using a new tile style of fusing agent that allows that same process but it keeps the part white this is a pretty interesting concept when you think about how it's being executed frankly i don't know all the inside outs there's still a lot of documentation that's becoming um, it's still confidential right now and as the machine is available to the general public we anticipate new documentation will be released to kind of give you some more context on how this works but one quick note for the guys that are familiar uh, with multi-jet fusion, you can see this. This is the cleaning roll that purges the, um, it kind of cleans the print heads as it passes. One of the things you'll immediately notice is this fusing agent is more of like a bluish tone rather than the very dark black that we typically see. Otherwise, the machine is essentially identical to the 5200. So that allows us to operate the same way 
and it um, allows all the same benefits that we're typically used to seeing. So I'm going to flip the camera and then talk about why this is important to not only us, but how it ultimately equates back to our customers. So the 4200 and the 5200 series printers, this is the typical result that you get. It is a grayish tone, and that's a combination of that dark fusing agent and the outside detailing agent that gives you that natural hue. So what most of our customers will do, or what we will do for most of our customers, and this is very common throughout the industry, is dye that gray part a nice black tone. This is just a standard dye black, no additional finishing on that. It's a much more consistent color. Black is commonly used in all sorts of industrial applications, so that's a very, very good option for a vast majority of, of projects and use cases. Well, there are many use cases, a lot of them that we can think of in the medical industry, in orthotics and prosthetics, in uh, cosmetic industry. There, there's all sorts of industries that we can think of where applying color is extremely important. So the 5420W not only gives us the option to print in white, but it also gives us the foundation that we can now dye that white part numerous colors, essentially infinite colors, to give us a, a whole new color palette. So rather than just gray or black, we now have infinite color options. So there are there have been options that we've provided up till now and a lot of competitors providing options as well where you can get color using this technology. Uh, or what we like to do is actually use the HP 580. So this is what we've been able to produce. Now this is actually an HP 580 color in full part in, or HP 580 part in full color. Well, this is cool. This is definitely a, applies the result that you would want. But there's always one major driving factor in all of this, and it's cost. So the multi-jet fusion part is, um, is very economical. The 580 is still very economical, but it's also two to three times the cost of multi-jet. So if a customer wants color, but it's not necessarily a design requirement, normally the cost benefit of having the 580 actually print the part just doesn't make sense. The, if you if you have an extensive color array and you have all sorts of mixed colors like, like that or applying very intricate QR codes, that's when your, your, your use case might justify that additional cost. Okay, well, another option that we have available is to print the parts in standard gray, and then we can coat it, apply a paint or, or a Cerakote finish. That's also a really good option. It allows us to apply a solid color throughout the part if that's all you're needing. But the downside is you take a really economical part and you start, you start stacking these additional post-processing requirements that each have individual costs associated so that the final part cost can be a little bit higher than what most people, again, want to be able to justify just for a, a want scenario rather than a need scenario. So going back to the 5420W, now it provides us that white foundation that is lower cost and we can use dye. So the cost is gonna be similar or lower to the coated option, definitely a little bit lower than the full color HP 580 option, but it's gonna give you more consistent results. It's gonna give you a better reliable, so we have more of, a, uh, more of a concrete lead time that we can provide you. And the best part about it is the color is gonna be embedded inside the part itself, so there's not gonna be any chipping or scratching or any of that stuff. So in summary, we now have all sorts of color options available to us, not just white, it's going to be cheaper, it's going to be faster, and it's going to be better than all of the other options that we have available to us right now. And going back to SLS, a lot of people will say, well, SLS has been able to do that for years. There's two differences that I would like to personally bring up. There's a lot of conversation that could be had around this, but the parts that I've seen from SLS, one, the white is not a pure white. I am excited to say that this is a very nice, pure white part that is being produced out of this machine. The second thing I would say is, again, that production speed that I've been uh, mentioning a lot throughout this quick quick video. That is the benefit of multi-jet, the production speed. And that production speed ultimately equates to production capacity. And that's what's really cool about it. So in summary, this machine gives us a whole lot of new options. It's gonna give us a whole lot of reduced variables that's going to reduce cost for everybody within the industry. We're excited to see what it does and we are really excited to see more and more people understanding what this machine can do and how it can equate to their specific projects. So, long video, talking really fast. Hope you're able to stay with me. I appreciate your time. I'm gonna get back to working on those machines and 
hopefully we can have a lot more good discussion in the comments. Thank you, everybody. Y'all have a good night. Thanks.